Inside this box is a very special motherboard because inside this motherboard is a CPU and you can't change it. A baked in CPU in this motherboard. And we're gonna take a look at this because I've never seen anything like this and it's very exciting. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So this is called Minis Forum AR900i Motherboard. And I'm going to leave the link in the description below if you want to check this one out. But let's take a look then. There is another box that comes with it at least with me and inside this box is a wi-fi antenna we've got some holes so you can probably mount it on the wall or something like that let's open this up okay so we've got a few screws something on the side Ooh, io shield interestingly looks like you're gonna have to screw the io shield onto the motherboard we'll take a look Alrighty, here it is. Okay, there's a few things going on and um, it's it's quite exciting. So firstly, this is the top of the motherboard and you can see some dim slots in here. You can see a PCIe slot in there. CPU power, motherboard power. And then we have the backside of the motherboard. So what we can see underneath here is there is a little heat sink or some kind of a cover in here. Yeah, this is a heat sink actually as well. So it looks like there is a chipset underneath here on this side and that's getting cooled down by this heatsink here then we have two m.2 nvme ssds slots in here they're quick slots that you can plug in here you've got your bios battery in here you've got another mini pwm like a fan connector here that i've not quite seen before here's some full-size fan connectors but you can see this here the mini fan here that's what's connected there and then you've got another one in here if you need it to for that. On this side, this fan heatsink here is actually a heatsink cooler. And this fan actually cools the M.2 SSDs. There's another two M.2 SSDs underneath here. So this small mini ITX motherboard that's got a CPU baked in actually has four M.2 slots. That's very interesting. So if we undo that screw in there and undo this screw in there, we can see the uh this is massive massive heatsink for the m.2 ssds so i'm gonna take one m.2 ssd this is the lexar nm790 and four terabyte model we're gonna plug it into there Do you want, let's plug it on the outside right quick release we're gonna peel this one off then we can put these screws back now there's a few things that make this motherboard very interesting firstly there is a heatsink that this motherboard comes in it's pre-installed and there there is a cpu underneath there in the middle but there is no fan that comes with this heatsink you're gonna have to mount your own fan which is a good thing because you're not gonna pay for something that's you know maybe not adequate but you're not going to get anything either. So you can really choose which fan you're going to get here. You might have lots of fans laying around and that's not a problem. There is this mounting bracket and that fits with 120 millimeter holes. So if I'm going to take the likes of Fantex T30 here, it's literally just going to slot into these three holes. You're going to need some kind of special screws that screw into here. Maybe these are the radiator screws. No, nope, definitely not. So the smaller screw holes. Then you've got a full 16 lane PCIe slot in there for your GPU, which we're gonna use there as well. Then we've got two Sodium RAM slots, which we're gonna populate. Here I've got Kingston Fury value RAM. And this is 64 gigabyte kit here. And this is 56 mega transfers per second as well which this actually supports. So then if we're looking at on the side on the motherboard connectors, 
We have our USB type A front panel header. We have front panel connectors. So that's your reset switch and power switch and so on. You've got actually a RGB well, it's not a header, it just holes in there. So if you want to use one of the 5 volt ARGB headers, usually it comes with a female header. You should be able to plug the mail in there and then actually get ARGB in here as well, which is interesting. We've got system fan, like two fan headers here. We've got a CPU fan header in there. We've got an ATX 24 pin power header in here. We've got front panel audio header in here and a CPU header in there. There's two more headers in there, but I'm not sure what these are for. Three pin headers. Then if we're looking at the IO of the motherboard, we've got your audio connectors there. You've got 2.5 gigabit LAN. Then you've got two USB type A 2.0 headers. You've got your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas, and this is Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, so very impressive as well. So this here, I believe, is clear CMOS button. You've got one Type-C connector, which is 10 gigabits in speed, and then two five USB Type-A gigabits in speed connectors. Then you've got one HDMI and one DisplayPort out. So these are from the integrated graphics that comes actually with the CPU. So that's interesting, but you still can get um, a little bit more, you know, outputs if you want to put in the full uh, GPU here. And this is what we're going to be doing. So I've got my test bench set up here and let's see if we can get this working then. Now, I've got a full size GPU here as well. This is an RTX 4060 Super and we're going to be plugging this in here. Let's see if we can turn it on. So the power on the PSU is on. I'm not sure if I've connected the right um, cables for this switch here. It is switching on. It's turning on. No postcodes, no nothing. So I don't know if it's going to work or not. The lights for this have come on. That's the Ethernet. Oh, we've got something here. Oh, we've got something here. <laughs> We've got Windows here. Okay, I put one of the SSDs in that has Windows on and voila, it is actually turning on. So I'm gonna be downloading Windows 11 for this because this CPU that's plugged in there is an Intel 13th gen i9-3900HX CPU, which is very, very interesting because it's a mobile CPU, but it's got 24 cores and 32 threads. So I've finally managed to set this guy up. But firstly, very important thing that you need to know when actually getting this. The BIOS is defaulted to actually use uh, a dedicated GPU. So if you plan to get any video output on the integrated you know, GPU from these two ports, you're not gonna get it because the auto function on BIOS didn't seem to work for me. So you need to actually enable the iGPU in BIOS if you actually want to get the iGPU working. What I have on here is an RTX 4070 Super from ASUS. This is ASUS 24070 Super, 12 gigs of VRAM, dedicated, powerful GPU, right. Then we've got an iGPU, which I actually enabled in BIOS and then I installed the driver. So now we can get video output through these as well. Now, finally, everything's going and I've got Windows 11 installed. I wanna know how good is this CPU? So firstly, if we're gonna go to our Intel uh, product specifications, I have got the 13900HX and K side to side. So we can see on the left, 900K, 900HX on the right side. One is mobile, one is desktop. But we can see that the HX goes up to 5.4 gigahertz. The 900K, 5.8 gigahertz, as you can see, up to. The E cores go 3.9 compared to 4.3 on the K. So as you can see, the K goes higher. The cache is exactly the same. The base power for the CPU is 55 watts on there for this mobile one, but 125 watts for the desktop one. But uh, there's some interesting things going because we can actually use Intel XTU 
to see how much power is there on the 3900HX, which usually on a laptop, you don't have so much cooling to play with, whatever there is on a laptop, but now we've got this on an ITX board, which means we can actually see how much juice we can pull out there and how close we can get it to 3900K. So you can see that the power wattage, the maximum turbo is 157 watts on some of the laptops. I can see on hardware monitor that the BIOS on this one has set to 120 the PL2 limit. So as you can see, it's not boosting as much. Rest of the things are pretty much very, very similar. If you do want to pick this up, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. Firstly, I want to test out how much cooling is possible with this now without anything else going. Right, so we're going to do one multi-core score so we can see 120 watts boosted right now my fan is put into another fan header and it's literally just very calmly 67 degrees 120 watts we're pulling from the socket and the fan is at idle and we pulled 120 watts throughout of this 26,000 points now the temperature wasn't an issue but i've set another fan header to be 100 fan speed so if I'm going to swap this out with this here. So now the fan is going 3000 RPM. This is the Fantex T30 fan, by the way. And let me do this again to see if we're going to hit better temperatures. So for some reason, we thermal throttle just for a second. But now our CPU package, as you can see, is 64, 65 degrees, about 5 degrees Celsius lower, 67 still, 68, 69. So interestingly, the temperature didn't much change compared to the fan speed. It's a little bit warm there, but now I'm going to turn the fan the other way. So previously we were pulling the air out. Now we're pushing it down and out from the side, okay? Fan goes down and out from the sides. Let's see if that is any different. 120 watts, 67 degrees, 68, 69. So looks like that didn't change quite as much. But let's start to increase the power limit and see how much power we do have actually in this CPU. So we're starting at 26,338. Now, max turbo power here. Why don't we turn this to 150, 160? So that's there. Let's move that one up. Apply 160 watts now. Interestingly, the package power is 145, not quite 160 for some reason. 29,000 points, okay? And we only hit 79 degrees. Now, the interesting thing is, I've got more of these fans, which we could daisy chain together to get even more performance out from there. Let's increase the power even more. Unfortunately, we can't quite increase the core clock speeds here. What we can do is check the core clock speeds right now at what are they doing in here. So P cores are going 3.9, almost four gigahertz at this setting and 3.3 on the E cores. Right, let's put that to 200 watts. See what happens. And let's put this 180 watts. 29007, let's see now. Interestingly, the clock speeds aren't going any further. 3.9, we're pulling 146 watts, interestingly. Power limit here is not going much higher. The maximum turbo power there says 157. Now, we're not thermally limited. As you can see, we're only hitting about 79 degrees. <coughs> Let's go into the BIOS and see if there is a limit that we can, um, you know, increase. We're gonna go to setup. You can see all sorts of things here. Advanced. CPU configuration, turbo enabled, ever these day, turbo mode enabled, power and performance, power limit one. So this is 100,000. Let's set this to 200,000. Power limit two to 200, that as well. Let's see if that works. Okay, you can see PL1 and PL2 now limits are set to 200. Let's see if this is going to change anything here. Are we going to pull 200 watts? 144. For some reason, it's just capped at 145 watts and 3.9 gigahertz. Well, might as well just go unlimited. I doubt it's going to do anything. 
yep the 145 is the maximum we're gonna get and as you can see i've got the fan at absolute like pretty much lowest speed settings maybe thousand something rpm and we're at 70 degrees which means that that tiny little cooler there is absolutely amazing now the boost clocks do go to 5.4 gigahertz and we're getting almost 30,000 points if I, if I turned everything off, we might get even 30,000. So I've got Cinebench uh, 2024 here, and we're gonna give a little bit of, uh, you know, something to do for the GPU as well, for the 4070 Super. For some reason, it just says Nvidia, probably because the driver, well, the GPU isn't released right now, by the time I'm at the time of me making this video. So let's see, GPU power should go about 220 watts. Interestingly, only 144, but as you can see, GPU memory, all of it gets allocated. 19,183, as you can see, it's quite a bit better than the W6800 from AMD from last generation. So basically, I'm looking at the benchmarks results and the 3090 TUF got uh, 19,358, which is 200 points higher. So it's basically, uh, 3090 kind of performance there on this let's see if we can get it any higher so the new 4070 super is basically 4070 ti what i'm seeing on the benchmark results yeah about the same let's try the single core test on this cpu because i'm really curious where does this line up so on single core we can see we're boosting about 5.1 gigahertz on the p cores there 5.2 and bullying roughly around 40 watts from the socket let's see the results so we got 123 points in single core score and i'm looking at my database right now that is faster than the 13700k so the single core is very very impressive there let's do the multi-core as well so we'll see if this is really uh faster than the 13700k the multi-core score is 1518 which is faster than 12900K. So we're getting a multi-core performance around there, but uh, I bet it's actually a little bit faster because I've been running it and you know, the way it performs down a little bit on the multi-core, it's a little bit faster. So we're getting roughly around 13700K performance on this guy. So right now we can see that this goes for $559, $560. So if we're looking at the 13700K, that is $364, which means we've got an extra $200 for the motherboard. We can get a pretty good motherboard here. 100Z690i with better features. So it looks like building your own is still a little bit of a better option in terms of price if you want to do that. But I still think this is a very interesting product if they lower the price a little bit because it's very hard to find an ITX motherboard on Intel platform that still gives you four M.2 slots in there, all Gen 4 NVMEs, that's very, very impressive. Plus, such a low profile motherboard and you can include your own cooling, kind of which fan you want, that's very nice as well. So they've kind of made a step halfway there. Look, CPU is solid in, you can't upgrade that one, you can upgrade the RAM, SSDs, the cooling, the Wi-Fi and so on, but on a mini ITX system, I would love to have a Thunderbolt or faster connectivity there as well. But the cool thing is you can put a dedicated GPU there. And as far as I know, this is the first motherboard that has integrated CPU. I'm not sure if there's any other ones out there, but I'd love to see an AMD version and love to see an unlocked version of that mobile CPU. Just give us somehow a way where we can push more power through there because as you can see, we are not thermally limited. We're actually just power limited and clock speed limited in there. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm very impressed. And uh, if you want to pick it up, the link is in the description below as well. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.